Folks, welcome back. This is the first of eight teachings in the third month of the ICT mentorship. And this topic is going to be specifically dealing with the time frame selection and defining setups for your model. Okay, for time frame selection, uh, there's a couple things that we break down in general ideas and terms. Uh, for the monthly chart, we use this for position trading. And for folks that are intraday um, intolerant, that means <laughs> you can't do anything in uh, lower time frames. Uh, the monthly chart is actually going to do a, a lot of assistance for your trading and your analysis. So don't don't be discouraged by the fact that I do a lot of intraday work and short-term trading. Uh, you'll be shocked to learn as we go through this mentorship the precision and the Accuracy that I have has a lot to do with the direction that's derived by the information on the monthly chart. But as it is, the monthly charts are the basis, if you will, for our long-term position trading. Now, I can admit to you, like I've done many times in the past, I am not a long-term trader. I don't have the personality to, to hold on to a position that long. Uh, I tend to change my mind a lot and... Uh, that doesn't fit well for a long-term position trader. So if you're a person that takes a long time to make a decision, uh, it comes hell or high water, you're sticking with it, um, that's probably the avenue that would best suit you as a trader. Now, I can't determine that. No one can do that but you, and that's going to come by way of you actually doing trades. Uh, if you get real s scared or if you get real uh, hyper about the uh, the short-term nature of trading, uh, if you trade on these longer-term charts or at least trade off of the, the ideas that come from the monthly charts, uh, it removes a lot of the price action shock that comes with intraday trading or short-term trading. The weekly chart, we use that for swing trading. Now, swing trading is a little bit more frequent than long-term position trading. Uh, swing trading is, in my, by my definition, it's typically a one or two trades within a three-month period. So every quarter of the year, in other words, every three to four months, there's going to be a setup that takes place. And you can find them very easily on a weekly chart. But because the weekly chart is much like the monthly in regards to how long it takes to form the setups, it takes a great deal of patience. And while I am attributed to having a lot of patience, it's not that great. Of, <laughs> in other words, the well doesn't go that deep. I don't have that much of patience. So the weekly chart, again, while I may not be trading specifically on the setup itself, um, I will use those ideas to help frame the short-term trades that I take or even the day trades. But for swing trading, again, for those individuals that can't be in the marketplace on a very intraday, minute-by-minute -minute basis, Again, this, the weekly chart will actually serve you very well. You don't have to do a whole lot of trading. There's a whole lot of time in between the setups. And much like the monthly chart, it removes that, that initial shock of short-term volatility. Now, the daily chart, that's where we do our short-term trading. The daily chart, to me personally, I believe this chart is the best chart there is because it gives you the best of both worlds. It gives you a long-term perspective. It gives you all of the near-term banking levels. So all the levels that the banks would be interested in, all the large funds would be interested in, you can clearly see those on this daily chart. The daily chart also gives us the framework to do a lot of analysis for short-term trading. So it has the benefits of higher time frame, but not to the degree of weekly and monthly, but it does give you a higher time frame perspective. So if we can arrive at 
strong analysis reference points in terms of institutional order flow. If we can look at points at which there may be stops, there may be a liquidity void, there may be a fair value gap. These ideas, much like we said in the first month of this mentorship, what things you should be specifically focusing on, uh, those ideas, if you apply that to the daily chart, you'll have a plethora of setups and plenty of things to, to trade on. Now, you can trade on a daily chart, again, if you are the type of trader that hasn't the opportunity to trade in front of the charts, be in the intraday price action, or again, if you're not comfortable trading in those lower time frames, the daily chart does a very good job of suiting uh, swing traders and short-term traders. So that, to me, is the reason why I like the daily chart the best. If there was a, a, a chart selection, I had someone hold a gun to my head, uh, which chart would I like to trade off of? It would be the daily chart because it gives you a great deal of range to work within. It gives you the interbank levels to be uh, monitoring, where stops would be residing, um, where long-term objectives would be seen in form of liquidity uh, above or below the marketplace. And, again, I, I counsel you that can't be in the day trading models that we use uh, to, to try to at least try your analysis on the daily charts. You try to work on those uh, specific time frames and if you still feel very sensitive or, or scared or if you have a lot of uh, in emotional or, or uh, influence over your emotions by watching price on daily chart seems a little too, too fast for you move up to the weekly chart okay there's nothing wrong with doing that uh, it just takes a lot more time and unfortunately some of you that are listening uh, you may have a business and you may have a lot of things going on in life maybe you're a college student Okay, maybe you can't be in, in in front of the price action on an intraday basis. Uh, when we trade these higher time frames, you're going to see that there's a lot of movement available, but you're going to have to submit to a lot of time too. And obviously, four hours or less is day trading. And we're not going to speak too much about day trading in this particular teaching because there's a lot of things that we got to go in regards to day trading and there's specific concepts that are inherently related to time of day. So while we're not going to teach that here, uh, the, the focus is you know, time, time frame selection and what time frame are we using these uh, specific time frames for. Now, defining setups for your model. Now, it's important as a mentor, I don't try to force you into a specific mold. Uh, it's never been my goal to give you a copy me, be just like ICT. Uh, that's not going to work. It's never going to work for anyone, uh, but it does give you a goal. It gives you a framework to work within while striving for um, replication of some of the things you probably see me do. Uh, you're going to discover the trader that actually resides in you. And when that happens and no one knows when that's going to occur, uh, you'll know it by experience being in the marketplace, looking for specific things and studying and one day, and it sounds like, you know, a fairy tale, but it really is. You'll have an epiphany where all of these things will suddenly make sense to you, and you'll know what type of trader you want to be. And it, what's even better is, is you actually know what setups that you'll like. Um, it's one thing for me to say I like a uh, four-hour turtle soup sell into a bearish order block that's seen on a daily chart. Well, that might be a setup that you can't wait for, okay? It may require you a lot more. Uh, patience than you have to do that. Um, that same setup, if it was done on, say, for instance, a weekly turtle soup sell into a monthly bearish order block, you know, I can't wait for that. I would never have any trading opportunities because they don't happen that often. But if it just happens to be the time when you look at the charts and you see that formation, then obviously that's your setup. But your pattern or your uh, bread and butter go-to setup, once you understand it, it's applicable on all these time frames. What makes the time frame selection process unique and why it's important for you as a trader to determine how you're going to trade it is because your comfort level and your psychological makeup as a trader has to align with that. So in other words, your patience level, your aptitude, and your life. I mean, let's just be real about it. Your, your life has to allow you the ability to be in front of the charts or at least to do the analysis and then execute on that analysis. So when we look for setups, we have to find setups that are 
uniquely defined for your specific trading model. And a lot of folks will say, you know, ICT, you got a lot of tools, you got a lot of things that, you know, you, you, you have a ton of things. Okay, do we have to know all these things? No, that's the, that's the benefit of studying conceptually and modular things because you'll quickly ascertain whether or not a specific pattern or, or concept um, gels with you. In other words, it, does it resonate with you as a trader? Uh, you're going to find that some of the systems and, and, and things out there in analysis uh, aren't really uniquely attractive to you as a trader, and I, I experienced that as a trader coming up. It wasn't a lot of things out there that I got uh, excited about, but uh, the few things that I did in early early on my days, it was uh, commitment to traders report, accumulation distribution, um, things of uh, relating to patterns. I like the patterns because I wanted to see specific things that repeat because obviously like anything else, you know, if, if you can see something coming, you know, obviously you know what to do should you see an opportunity coming. Uh, the problem is, is many of the things I was studying, I couldn't find them real time or before they actually came to fruition. So as I refined my trading model and specifically dealt with institutional order flow and price action, then suddenly it was like the veil was lifted and I had blinders removed from my eyes. Then I could see setups that made very specific uh, formations and they had specific criteria that I can really define and make it very objective about how I trade, which is what I was looking for as a trader when I first started. But when I first started, I was looking at indicators thinking that was going to be the answer. And you probably, if you're listening, uh, you probably have had that same feeling. Like you, you want to feel informed. You want to feel like you know what you're looking for. But because you don't, and it's normal for you not to know what that is when you first start trading, even for some that uh, – waffle for the first couple of years and they still can't find the rhythm, uh, they will sometimes look to an indicator to give them a a reason to do something. And because this, they just need to be told something outside of their own ability to you know, decide. And sometimes you'll, you'll see that the indicator will lead you to a setup, but then most of the time it really doesn't. And it's because most of your trades are linked to a mathematically derived indicator. When we look at setups, we're looking at specifically finding unique characteristics that repeat themselves over and over again in price action because there are generic characteristics and traits in price action that repeat over and over again. They're not limited to any one of these specific time frames. So when we look for specific setups, we're going to find a setup that we individually as a trader like the most, the one that we can see easily. And you're going to see that while some of them overlap, some of them won't overlap, but they still will give you an opportunity to be in the marketplace in the right direction. So a trend trader, that's one model that a trader can be using all my concepts with. Uh, you're going to be trading only in the direction of the monthly and weekly charts. So in other words, if the monthly and weekly are indicating it's going to be a bearish marketplace, you're going to only be trading short and holding on to these positions for a great deal of time. Uh, if it's bullish on the monthly and the weekly chart, obviously you're going to look for buy signals and you're going to hold them for a great deal of time. That is the nature of uh, trend trading. And again, I am not a long-term position trader. So while I tried that early on in my career, it didn't fit me and it didn't tickle my fancy. So I'm a short-term trader. <laughs> now, swing trader, which I've done a lot in my early days, but because I found that it was more of an allure for me to be in the marketplace more than just a couple times a month, a swing trader, they're trading the daily intermediate term price action, and you're going to see there's a lot of setups that require you to sit on your hands and wait, but when they form and you position yourself in them, they offer stellar rewards, I and mean, they just go on and on and on, and, and the payouts are amazing, but again, it requires a great deal of patience, so I can tell you as your mentor, I just don't have a lot of patience for swing trading on the daily chart. It just takes too much time to wait for the setups and for the trades to pan out. I want my money to have velocity. In other words, I want to be able to put my money at work, let it do its thing, get my return, and then compound that returned rate and my base equity and put it back to work again into something that gives me more velocity. So when I say these things, I'm not trying to talk to those individuals that are comfortable trading on a monthly chart or a weekly chart. 
I'm trying to tell you that me personally, what I found about myself as a trader, my defined setups are on a lower time frame than the daily chart. So it requires a little bit more uh, dynamic study and time in front of the charts, but that's what my unique model is. I, I, I excel in that that approach to trading. You, again, may not be set up psychologically or emotionally prepared to trade like that, and there's nothing wrong with that. So don't think that I'm trying to force you into a specific trading model or a mold of trading. You're going to discover that as we go through these 12 months. Also, you're going to learn, this is how I started, as a contrarian trader. Okay, now it doesn't always mean that being contrarian is the right way to go about it. And it doesn't mean that uh, not being a contrarian is the right way always as well. Uh, there's going to be times when to be a contrarian trader is optimal. And what you're basically doing is you're trading reversal patterns at market extremes. So when the market's really gone a great distance higher and it's been moving higher for a long period of time, uh, eventually it's going to hit a specific level or significant level, I should say, uh, usually and typically it's on a higher time frame. Uh, it will create reversal patterns. Now, it doesn't mean that the market's going to reverse and create a top there. It can, and sometimes it will, but you can still trade reversal patterns at extreme moves or what would be uh, referred to as capitulation, where the market just moves extremely, you know, that last bit of burst higher if it's been bullish or that quick sudden drop, you know, with a great deal of magnitude going lower, and it usually makes the low of the, of the move. Uh, gen generally, sometimes you're going to see that uh, uh, there will be times where you want to be contrarian and see that move as a blow-off move, and it's the end of the move, and you can probably catch some really good setups in the form of a reversal pattern. But it doesn't always have to require capitulation. It could be on a short-term basis where if you watch the daily chart, uh, we may go above a previous month's high, and that may be a really good selling scenario to sell short, but not forever, but it's still an opportunity to trade with. And then for short-term trading, which, again, that's what I excel in, uh, you're trading the weekly ranges, and you're holding for typically about one to five days in duration. And then, obviously, setups that are found for the day trader's model, where you're trading intraday swing trading with exits by 2 p.m. New York time. Now, when we look at this, this is the actual uh, broad brush idea of everything that I do as a trader, everything I've done as a trader, how I excelled from using long-term higher time frame charts down to what we're seeing here in uh, number five and number four uh, in respective uh, terms of time frame selection, uh, four hour or less, that's you know where I excel at. And then uh, my setups are day trading in nature. Now, again, because I have a universal application and I had experience doing all these types of trading, uh, just because I don't elect to trade on a monthly or weekly or daily all the time. Uh, what I'm actually telling you is, is I can do that, but because of my appetite for more action and because I want to put my money at work faster, get a ready return, and then put it back to work again so I can turn it and, 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 and capitalize on velocity, turning my money over and over and over again quicker, uh, I have adopted the mindset that that's my goal, that's my pursuit, so therefore to do that more efficiently and expediently, it's going to be in the form of day trading or short-term trading. Do not let me convince you or try to talk you into that's the best way to go because it's not. It's not for everyone. So you can still compound your money exceedingly well trading on a higher time frame charts. Believe me, it's not about the setups or the time frame. It's about your unique alignment with the setups and the time frame that meets the happy medium for you as a trader because all of us have a family. All of us have real world tug of wars that take place. You know, some of us have spouses that require a lot of our time. You know, some of us are in high maintenance relationships. Some of us are in codependent relationships. Some of you are not in a relationship. Okay. Some of you are you know, doing things that are going to be a, uh, a barrier to you doing a lot of trading or a lot of studying. And it's going to require you to do a lot more research and action in those higher time frame monthly and weekly charts and you know, daily. But if I were to counsel you and you were going to listen to me, I would suggest that you start in the daily chart. Um, even if you're going to know it in your heart of hearts that you're going to try to be a day trader, uh, start with the daily chart. 
because uh, the daily, daily chart is going to be a really good bellwether. Um, it's just the one that will give you everything you need to know with a lot of the higher time frame uh, reference points. And it also give you the directional bias that everybody looks for. And they're always asking by way of email, you know, tell me how to get in, where, where to buy, and how do I know the day's going to be up or down? Well, you find that on the daily chart. That tells you everything there. And once you go through this teaching and the next teaching with institutional order flow, you'll see how easy uh, the, the daily bias is really. It's not that hard. But the problem is, is trusting it. That, that's the hard part. All right, so let's take a look at a monthly chart, okay? And the monthly chart, its premise or its uh, influence in your analysis is it's the long-term price action reference for the largest price action swings in trading. Now, trading setups that take a great deal of time like this, they form in a time frame that most people can't bring themselves to trade. But when they unfold, these setups that you see in the monthly chart – they tend to unfold over a period of many months. Uh, they don't just happen like little blips on a five-minute or one-minute chart. They just go on and on and on. Now, due to the length of time this chart requires to present a setup, trading in the direction of the most recent setup can yield the lowest risk with the highest reward conditions. Now, what I mean by that is when you have the directional bias or trend, I'll say it with quotation marks, uh, if you can see where the market's going to most likely go on a monthly chart, you have a great deal of advantage by trading in that direction. Even if you don't catch the actual move that creates the optimal entry for a sell or a buy, because it's a monthly chart, the very nature of its time frame, it gives us a great deal of time to still capture moves in that same directional bias or in that trend direction. Now, swings that uh, form on the monthly chart, obviously, they can be several hundreds of pips, and it's going to require a long period of time to unfold. But let's take a look at a sample size of price action on a monthly chart here. Now, obviously, we just turn our charts on. We look at, and this is what's recently happened here, and all of a sudden, the very next month, we see that. Okay, we weren't watching price closely. This particular market was uh, unclear to us at the time, but right away, now we know that there's somebody in the marketplace moving price around. Okay, go back to the very first teaching in this mentorship where I tell you to look for markets that want to show a strong willingness to move away from a particular level. Now, prior to that down move, we saw price in a small little consolidation, about 600 pips or so in uh, in range. And then finally, the market broke down on a monthly basis. So each one of these candles represents a month's worth of data. And eventually, the market takes a greater deal of uh, magnitude lower, it, it surges lower. And again, uh, take a look at how many pips this would be. And obviously, this is the Euro USD. The the move from 59.50, we'll call it, all the way down to let's just say 2450. Okay, that's a lot of pips, a lot of pips. Now, when you see this, it's rather shocking when you view it in terms of how many pips are available and it takes you three months to cover that much distance or a little bit well four months to cover it really so in four months the euro dollar trades a couple thousand pips okay now again each one of these ranges are specifically a monthly range in other words the highest part of that candle for each individual candle is the high it traded to the most for that that particular month, and the low of the candle is the lowest that traded for that month. The opening is where the month started trading, and then the close is the last trading day of the month where it closed. In these individual monthly candles, there are a plethora of setups. Think about what you have there. You roughly have about 20 trading days without holidays included, you know, things of that nature and non-farm payroll, which we don't trade. But we'll just say roughly it's about 20 trades, 20 trading days per one of these candles. So every one of these bars represents 20 potential trading days. Now, inside of those daily candles, okay, if we were to break them down, okay, there are individual setups as well. Now, also, and I skipped over this, inside of these candles of representation of monthly data, there are typically about four weekly candles, 
And again, inside the weekly candle, there's a great deal of opportunities in there. So I want you to think like that. When we look at a seed, okay, if I were to show you a seed, say, for instance, a, a apple seed, I placed an apple seed inside your palm, and I asked you what you see. Obviously, most of you would have a very myopic view and say, well, you know, obviously it's, it's an apple seed. I know it, I've seen it before. But I want you to have that view where you see the apple seed, yes, but you see the potential of that apple seed and how many trees that one seed could produce over time. And with the, um, the, the creation of all these new trees, the obvious is that you'll have more apples. So when we look at these higher time frames, we look at it as – that's that seed, okay? That really high probability trade scenario exists in the monthly chart. Now, most of you don't want to spend time in a monthly chart. Most of you could care less about what that monthly chart says or what it's done because there's no magic in the monthly chart because it takes what? A whole month to create. The problem is that's the wrong perspective. You need to look at the monthly chart and say, hey, you know what? Um, if the monthly chart's moving around, okay, and the monthly chart's having sensitivity at specific levels, uh, who would be moving price around on these levels? And obviously the answer would be large banks and institutions. So if we have that mindset, we can go into the monthly chart with a great deal more of appreciation saying, okay, well, I know that the market's going to be driven by deep pockets if it's going to push pr price around on the monthly chart. There's a great deal of Deep pockets, smart money, banks, institutions, they're all going to be in here pushing price around. So it's in your best interest to understand what that monthly chart is going to do and what it has already done. In this case, let's just say we opened up our chart and we saw the euro dollar here, and this is what we see. So right away, without having any other forms of reference, okay, we don't need anything like that. And this is how I'm trying to tell you understanding price action. It's very pure. I don't need to know where trend is prior to this sample size and data. I don't need to know what indicators are indicating bullish or bearishness. I don't need to know that either. I don't need to know what crossing overs of any moving averages took place. I just need to know where has price moved away from, and was it was it with a great deal of magnitude? Yes, obviously we moved away very strongly from a, a consolidation around the uh, uh, 51 or 52 level up to the 59.50 level, okay? So we had about 700 bit range or so. And when we see this, the way I want you to view prices, your eyes goes immediately to that last up candle because we understand that smart money is going to sell in up moves. They sold in that up candle, kept it in a range, and then finally it broke down below that up candle's low. So now the point is, yes, You've missed that boat. The opportunity's missed. You, you you couldn't sell short there because we're going to assume that we're now just looking at the chart for the first time. You as a trader can say, okay, I know that if it gets back up to that candle's low, and again, this is the monthly chart, I'm going to have a trade, and I'm going to define that trade by way of that specific up candle's low. So eventually when price does that, we have many months before it actually does it. Over a year transpires. Now think about this now. <laughs> Over a year transpires before price returns back to that up candle's low or that bearish order block. But as soon as it hits it, then you have a setup. Now the question is, is when price hits that, okay, it takes a long time to get to that particular level. But as price was trading around that 127.30 level, and eventually it trades through the 130.50 level, up through the 132 level, okay, we have an indication that the price is probably going to want to go back up. And there are stops, obviously, around that 146 level with that big up candle right here, this big up candle right in here. So there's going to be stops resting above that high. Again, thinking about that concept that I gave you, what to focus on now in the September content of this mentorship. So we have this candle breaking above this down candle, this bullish candle here. All of a sudden now, 
we have a willingness to do, to do what? We expect to see price try to trade back down into this down candle, and it does it here. So we can expect to see bullishness here. So if we see this, we know that there may be some bullishness on the upside, okay, and price – may reach up above to take these stops. And if it does that, it may reach back up here to this bearish order block. So when it finally gets back up to that bearish order block, we've had two instances where we can see where price has on a monthly chart broke down, traded all the way down here. We can see the bearish candle here that was violated on the upside, and then it returns back into that down candle. So we can see bullishness in the form of a bullish order block. In that case, we can see that price has a willingness to potentially range expand up into that return of that bearish order block right over here. But when it does hit this, when it finally hits that particular level there, the question is, is where would price likely trade to next? On well, the monthly chart, again, this is no different than what you see me do on a 15-minute chart, and an hourly chart, or even a daily chart. But what – where would you reasonably expect to see price trade from once it trades at this level here? Well, what's under there? We got basically equal lows, but look at the bodies of the candles also. It's too clean, way too clean. Now, again, think, this is a monthly chart, folks, monthly. If we are looking at this right now for the first time and we sit in front of our charts and say, okay, I see this level being hit – what could we do with this? Obviously, we can expect to see price trading lower. But why? Why lower? Below those lows is going to be what? Sell stops. Now, the question is this. Who in their right mind would have sell stops below that low? And the answer to your question is, is large funds. Large funds. Long-term trend-following funds will have stop-loss orders right below that low. They will leave stops in for a very, very long time, and they have lots of money in play. So when the market trades at that basically that 50, 80 level, and it goes lower and expands lower, it's rushing down to get to those stops that are residing below the, 20, the 122 level. And look at that last candle before it blows out the lows here. All these lows in here, that last candle, when it hits it, look what it does. It explodes to run out those particular stops. Now, again, I want to remember, remind you that this is a monthly chart. So if we see this and we can outline where the market may reach up into, which took a trade uh, duration of six months to unfold, but it took over 13 months to set up. It took 13 months for this, basically, the, the trade up to get back to an area where we would see a setup to form on the monthly chart. But then once the formation comes into fruition, look how many months it takes to unfold. we got one, two, three, four, five, six candles or six months. Look how much acceleration there is. It's half the time. Half the time it took for this chart to unfold and set up the setup. And in half the time, or basically six months, to get down to these stops. In this setup, okay, in this setup, I'm going to ask you a question. What type of trader are you? When price was hitting that 50, 75 to 50, 80 level or thereabouts, what type of trader would you be there? When price is most likely going to come down and clear out those stops, you have several opportunities to choose from. You can be a possession trader and be short around that 150, 80 level, 151, and look for a move all the way down to the 122s. Now think about that. That's an enormous amount of time and potential range. Could you take that trade? Do you have the wherewithal to hold on to it? Personally, I, I couldn't hold that long. But does that mean I can't trade this idea or these perspectives on, on the euro dollar? If I can see 51 big figure, one, you know, it's 151, or the return back to that bearish order block, that's we're noting here at that orange level, 
when price is trading there, it's spent two two months giving you an opportunity to get on board. If you see that, and the reasonable expectation would be, okay, well, there's some equal lows down there. It's probably going to take a long time to do it. But between the 151 level that we'll say and the 122 level, there's our range. So between those two reference points, we have a known range to work within. Now, again, this is a monthly chart. Before all these down candles form, we have the potential range identified. So we can now break this down and say, okay, I already know where price may likely go relative to the monthly chart. So how can we use this information going forward and go across all the spectrum of types of trading? Again, it's over 2,900 pips for that price swing. 2,900 plus pips. So let's take a look at this swing on a weekly chart and refine that more in terms of defining setups for your trading model. Here's that same price swing, and we're now we're looking at it on a weekly chart. Now, this is an intermediate term price action reference point. So everything we see here is on the scale of inter intermediate term. So obviously, because it's a weekly chart, it still takes a great deal of time for these things to set up, but it's a lot more refined when we break it down into a weekly chart. You can see a lot more detail. We can see, obviously, when the market trades back up into previous institutional reference points, like this down candle right before the move up, this down candle is a breaker. What's it breaking? It's breaking the old high here, running out stops. This breaker is lower than this one here, so we're going to have to refer to that one here as, as the initial run up. It trades up into this range right there. There's a selling opportunity. We already know that the range is potentially going to expand to run out based on the monthly chart, that this is where the liquidity is going to be. What kind of liquidity? Large fund liquidity. So the market expands, goes lower. Then it consolidates again. It trades lower and comes right back up into what? A bearish order block. So you can expect to see what? Another opportunity to sell off. Why? Because it's your, you're trading in the direction of the monthly chart. But now you're expecting the weekly chart to expand. And it's going to most likely expand down into this level where liquidity would be resting. We could take this one step further and refine it down into a daily chart. Now, obviously, the daily chart is going to be a short-term action-based time frame where you can see all of the intermediate and you can see the short-term highs and lows in the marketplace. But more specifically, you can see how you can actually frame your short-term trades and your day trades. Now, again, we're not going to talk about day trading for this model here, but for short-term trading, we're going to look at specifics that deal with that. We know that the range is defined from a known high and a known low. The high is where that bearish order block was on the monthly chart. The low at which we're aiming for was those lows on the monthly chart where they were equal lows. So we know the stops that were resting below that. So if we know that, we can take our FIB and lay it across those two reference points. And by doing so, we end up doing what? We start grading that price swing. So these levels that we have here, these horizontal lines, they're areas at which the market should see new setups form. Now, here's the thing. We knew the range before it actually traded. So we can anticipate new trading scenarios or ideas to form in our charts when price trades at this particular level. And setups will form in close proximity to these levels as well. So every time we see this is the first quarter lower from the high down to the low. So this is 25% uh, of that range. We see a setup in here. Okay. The market trades lower. We go into equilibrium. The market does what? It trades lower, comes right back to equilibrium, and expands again. Comes back one more time, returns into the range, sells off again. The market sells off, comes back up, fills in a void, sells off again one more time, and closes, hits the terminus of the move. Now think, all these things that we've been teaching so far, they're repeating themselves, but the thing is, this was all outlined on a monthly chart. But the trading ideas are refined further by breaking down the monthly chart into a weekly chart, then the weekly chart breaking that down into a daily chart. Now, as a pattern trader or a setup-seeking trader, like you all are, uh, there's several things that we do in the ICT camp. We look for optimal trade entries, which is a simple return back into a known range. 
uh, and that's the only indicator based ideas I like to use, and it's based on FIB and returning into a known uh, open range. The the other ones are obviously order blocks, and then there's stop runs, which we classically call the turtle soup, which is a false breakout, which is what you're seeing here. Every instance we see on this chart, we have a short-term high here. Now think, inside this shaded area, the monthly chart, we used it to frame what? The idea that we're going to go long-term lower. As we are in this shaded area until it ultimately hits the the 2175 level or so, um, we're going to be bearish on the marketplace. So we look for what? The marketplace on the daily chart to seek liquidity above old highs. Why would they want to do that? The market's traded lower. The short-term high, relatively equal to this one here, there's going to be buy stops resting above that short-term high. They run above it and then explodes lower. Okay? We have a short-term high here. Market trades above it, and then explodes lower. I want you to notice every single time that the market takes out a short-term high just by a little bit and then quickly accelerates on the downside. Why is that taking place? Because they're absorbing liquidity on the buy side. They want to pair up their orders to sell into those known participants that want to – they want to buy here with their trailed stop loss at a, in the form of a buy stop. Because think about it. If you're short, how do you protect your position? You put a buy stop above a recent high. And then typically what will happen is the market will come back and knock you out, and you'll start cussing, or the market will move away in your favor, and then you can look for another point at which you want to lower that stop loss, protecting and locking in profit. Well, what we do is we look for these opportunities in the form of false breaks above an old high with the idea on a higher time frame chart that indicates that price may go lower. So this is like a holy grail setup where it's absolutely barn burner. You get in there and you look for a short-term high to be violated on the daily chart. Look how many times it does it in the scope of all these many days. But look at the logical areas at which it does it. It's close to those those grades that we did on the overall total price swing that we expect to see. It does it here. We have it here. We have it here. We don't see it in here, but if we go down to a lower time frame, you will see it. And then we see another one in here as well. So when we look at price, okay, if you are looking to trade only stop runs, okay, you first have to know why the stop run would be necessary or why it would be influential in terms of price action, and you get that from the higher time frame like we showed with the monthly chart. You hold on to that bias until clearly you're, in the, you're shown that you're wrong. In other words, this thing could have easily turned around here and started trading all the way up and start getting violently bullish. And that would have to obviously make you change gears or at least put pause on the notion you expect to see the euro dollar to trade lower. But until it does that or it hits the terminus or whether we ultimately think the price is going to go, we stay with that mindset. We stick with it. So if you're not a – stop run setup trader. In other words, you, you can't see turtle soups if you don't have the ability to, to trust that or know that what you're selling into okay, is a high probability scenario where it's going to see an explosion in the higher time frame direction, in this case down. Uh, there's other things you can trade, and they come in way of breakers and bearish order blocks. Now, obviously, the whole move starts back here with that monthly – bearish order block that it trades up into, but look what it does. It comes in the formation of a turtle suit or a false break or run above equal highs, taking out the what? The buy stops, and then what happens? The market surges quickly, okay? And then we had that previous um, turtle soup here, but now look. Say you can't see the turtle suit. No problem. There's absolutely no problem. This down candle in here, right before the move up above this short-term high, that down candle is a breaker, and you'll learn about that in this mentorship. As price is trading in here and trades back up into the breaker, you can now expect to see price to trade lower, and it does that. We have another breaker in here, down candle right before the up move that takes out a previous high. So you can't see the turtle soup here, no problem. See it in hindsight. The market's already moved down here. When it trades back up into that breaker, you can go short. Well, what about if you are an optimal trade entry trader? You pull the FIB from this high down to this low, you'll get a 79% trade cent lower here. Optimal trade entry gets short. Okay, then you have another breaker here. You have a down candle right before this move above this short-term high. 
Okay, when price trades back up up to it here, you get short at that breaker. Sell off. Boom. What about this one here? This is a bearish order block. Last up candle right before this down move. Returns to that level. Sell it short. And there it is. What you're doing is you're using the higher time frame and you're using your defined setup for your model. If you're a trader that's focusing on being short, you need to identify what pattern you're going to be looking for. It could be one or two, but it's important to know one. You only need one good pattern. And I only have really technically three. I trade inside of a range, okay, where I'm pulling back into a, a, a an exposed range, okay, or if it's bullish and it rallies up, I'm waiting for the pullback to close in that range, and then I'm going to buy it again. Or I'm selling at a bearish order block, or I'm selling short into a run above a previous high for, for sell stops. Now, I'm only taking three setups. There's only really three setups that I trade. I'm trading inside the range. If there's nothing that I can see as a violation above an old high or below an old low, I'm selling above a previous high if I'm bearish, or I'm selling at a previous bearish order block if I don't believe that it's necessary to go up for those stops. And you'll learn when those conditions are there because I know what you're thinking. That's the thing I need to know, ICT. That's the one. Because if, if it's me trading back to a bearish order block, but it could potentially be a turtle soup, how do I know which one? You're going to learn that. But i got to give it to you in pieces at a time. So again, when we look at the market like this, and we have our time frame selection, and then we have our setups for our particular trading model, and that model is going to be defined by you over time. No one's going to be able to tell you this is how you do it. Okay, I'm giving you suggestions. And the three setups that I particularly trade, you're going to be able to gravitate to one of them. And it may be order blocks. But for some of you, the order block is going to be problematic. It's going to be, I don't know which one to trust. But you'll clearly see where the stop runs are, and you'll be able to trade turtle soups. But maybe you can't do that either. Well, you'll trade in liquidity voids. Okay, you'll wait for the price to come back down, close in a range, and then you'll wait for expansion to happen. But the point is, these three forms of discipline that I use for trading, they always exist in all time frames. And it doesn't matter if you like order blocks and your best friend that you're trading, uh, you're studying with and you're comparing notes with, which you really shouldn't be doing, by the way, as I say that <laughs> in this mentorship. But if, uh, you know, if you're, if you're seeing other people talk about their ability to do certain things and you feel frustrated that they are excelling in an understanding of order blocks and you are struggling, but you can see the the turtle suit run on stops. That's your pattern. Don't force it. Don't try to – just because order blocks or somebody's showing a lot of trades because they can see the order block, there's no preference over this. It's whatever I see at the time when I turn the charts on. And if there's a void and it comes back into that void, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to look for that run to try to run that previous high. If we, if we rallied up and we created a, a liquidity void on the upside, and when that trades back down to that range, I'm going to buy it with an expectation it's going to make a new high. And that's the only setup I'm looking for. I'm not looking for 5,000 pips. I'm just looking for that known range. And you'll learn all that. But don't think that I'm forcing anyone to be any one particular trader, but you will learn these three conditions in the marketplace because that's the only three I trade with today. I don't do anything outside of that. I don't trade oral patterns. I don't trade, uh, you know, uh, all the things that I shared in the past. They were all hallmarks of my uh, – uh, you know, coming up as a trader, but I don't do all those things today. I only trade these three things, and I don't need anything more. In fact, I could just reduce it to one, but because I like a lot of action, um, I, I will look for these three things every single day across the charts, and I'll find a setup. And I've seen, I've, I've shown it to you, I've proven to you on a daily basis. When you understand these three characteristics in price action, nothing evades you. Not a reversal, not a trend following pullback and not a expansion out of a consolidation. Nothing will evade you. You'll have everything you need to know in a repertoire, in a toolbox, to trade any market profile. So with that, I'm going to wish you good luck and good trading.